Hello, I'm David Gauntlet. I used to live and work in the UK and now I'm in Canada at Ryerson University in Toronto. I write about media and creativity and identity to some extent. This video is not produced for just any purpose about those things, but it's for those students in the UK who are doing A and AS level media studies because the syllabus says that you need to know about Gauntlet and what he says about identity. And it's not always clear what that is or what they're talking about. And sometimes people ask me to clarify things that I may or may not have said. Sometimes on Twitter, where media, media studies teachers sometimes ask me questions and media studies students sometimes ask me questions. Um, so I thought I'd say a, a little bit about Gauntlet and identity. Gauntlet is me. Identity is a concept. So one thing is, when the exam board says you've got to talk about Gauntlet and identity, that's probably because whoever wrote that is thinking about a book that I did in 2002, second edition in 2008, uh, called Media, Gender and Identity. That's now, you know, it was first written nearly 20 years ago. That's a long time ago. If you're thinking, geez, this Gauntlet was saying things that seem like they're 20 years out of date, of course. <laughs> that, that's because it was written then and due to the chronological nature of time uh, I can't help that and nor can you but um, we can think about how things have changed since then because they've changed a lot you know the things I was saying in a book that came out in 2002 I wanted to be in a conversation about media and identity and gender then in 2002 and 2003 maybe up to about 2005 but, um, you know, I didn't expect people to be using it in 2020 because it's about different stuff and times have changed and media and technologies have changed and our thoughts about these issues and the, and the content as well. All of that's changed. And our ability to be creative now in a way that was relatively difficult then. That's all changed too. So, one thing is, uh, because the exam board specification only says gauntlet and this identity as part of representation um they don't say which bit of gauntlet you need to be talking about so i can point you towards some newer bits of gauntlet that are more relevant to now but let's first of all talk about identity one of the tricky things is in the syllabus and the exam questions for a and as level media studies they seem to sometimes using this they use this language or they seem to be assuming that like media texts construct identity and you can look at particular texts and say how does this construct identity um but that's not how identity works because identity is in people you know i construct my identity through using my brain and through using the millions of inputs that i get all the time that is how my identity is made so it isn't made by a media text that doesn't work and that just doesn't make sense. The language of that doesn't make sense. Um, and I never spend a lot of time looking at single media products because what's the point? It's just one thing. The point about the role of the media in our lives is that we are impacted by, potentially influenced by, certainly it feeds into what our brain is processing. Millions of things. All, all of the, there's millions of things that go into our brain and get processed. I'm focusing on just one is kind of weird sometimes you might look at a particular movie or advert or something because it seems like it represents an interesting change in the culture or because to any particular individual might be certain things that are memorable but they're going to vary for every individual so we can't really uh, you can't pick on one text that's going to be relevant to a whole load of people so it's tricky and complicated but that's okay. That's the thing that you can say that identity is a complex thing, many inputs, which everybody processes and takes in and everybody responds to them all differently. It only gets difficult when the exam board seems to want you to say, how does this piece of media, this poster or advert or something construct identity? Um, I suppose what they mean is what identities is it trying to suggest or promote to people? And if we live in a culture where there's lots of representations like that representation, whatever that is, then, you know, that, that does then acquire a certain force. 
as a representation that you see quite a lot of and it's more likely to have an impact but it doesn't necessarily have any predictable impact and it's going to be different for different people and for different groups in the aqa media studies specification for example i know it says um i've got it written here theories of identity as summarized by gauntlet this is what you meant to know about fluidity of identity constructed identity negotiated identity and collective identity four different things um these are all parts of the same thing i'll just go through them fluidity of identity yeah over time our identities can change and adapt and develop and that is the fluid nature of identity so yeah and fluidity of identity also points to the idea of a kind of free play of identity and that we can more freely choose what to identify with and how to present ourselves than perhaps people could in the past but we need to think about particular kinds of privilege i'll come back to that shortly then there's constructed identity which is not that different we construct our identities by using different media inputs uh that's the thing you do over time it is fluid it's not that different negotiated identity presumably refers to the sort of negotiation you have between your own sense of what you might like to be and different media objects that you experience in the world that's similar to constructing it really and then they've got collective identity which i guess is about the broader frameworks that you fit into but again you either do or don't fit into different kinds of frameworks and some of them are more or less important to you and you can choose to kind of switch in and switch out which things you most identify with but obviously some things are more free floating than others some things like race for example you can't just switch in and out of at will and that reminds me of the point i was going to make earlier about privilege as a white male it might be kind of easy and straightforward for me to say that there's all these potential identities up for grabs and we can take ideas from different kinds of media and we can create our own and decide who we want to be in the world and that's a freedom which might seem quite straightforward to me and isn't necessarily so straightforward for other people in other groups and of course we need to be aware of that anyway these four sort of supposedly different approaches to identity fluidity, constructed identity, negotiated identity, and collective identity, they're all parts of how we all process identity. It's always a thing produced by human beings thinking about who they want to be in the world and taking in all the different kinds of inputs and suggestions and ideas that circulate in the culture. As I said, but just to highlight it again, I think it's always a mistake to be focusing on any one bit of media because it's just one bit and there's so many things in the world. So identity is complex, it involves a range of different things processed by your own brain. It may include some given elements, things which you arrive in the world with, such as the gender that you start out with, the race that you have and so on, um, other positions that you occupy. But then also you create your own sense of self, yourself, and you draw on resources that exist in the world media resources and other things uh, input from parents and friends and so on as you grow up of course that's all important and we are creators of things in the world and that's the bit of if you're meant to be talking about gauntlet and identity uh, you can talk about newer things where if you look on my website davidgauntlet.com um, and oh look uh, in 2018 this is the second edition of making is connecting from 2018 that's a book <laughs> um which is all about how now unlike 20 or 30 years ago um we can all so easily be forming a sense of purpose and identity and meaning in our lives through the things that we create I mean, people could do that 20 or 30 years ago, but they were that you could do it with physical objects and other stuff. But the way in which we can now do that using digital electronic media is straightforward and kind of global and powerful. And you may be familiar with uh, the critiques of the social media platforms and the ways in which they do surveillance and they profit so much from labor done by creative people who don't see very much or any of that money themselves they're gathering all of that data about us that's the surveillance point actually 
I already did that point. But all of that bad stuff about social media companies, that's all true, that those are bad things and things to worry about. But that's not relevant to what I'm talking about. I'm talking about how YouTube does give you the ability to share little bits of video like this so easily with so many people, if they're interested. Um, and we just didn't have that before. Uh, YouTube sprung up in 2005, 2006. Uh, so at the time when I was writing Media, General and Identity, we didn't have that for video. We had the early internet and could make websites and stuff. And I did do a book in 2000 called Web Studies, which was about the emerging popular internet and the ways in which people could make things and create and connect and share all of that. So that's been going for a while. But identity now then is about people making their own meanings, their own representations and the power of that. So I would definitely talk about that if you have to talk about identity and what Gauntlet says about it now. What Gauntlet says about it now is we nowadays have straightforward online tools that enable us to express things that we want to express and create experiences and, and just nice creative things that we want to share with other people. And creativity is at the heart of identity and is powerful and is a way to connect with others and to make bonds and to feel part of something when you recognize you're part of a creative community and there's other people that like to do your kind of stuff and you can inspire them and they can inspire you and you can have a kind of laddering of creativity or a scaffolding of inspiration I call it and so that idea that identity if it, if it ever was a thing that was sort of created by media institutions or created by sort of media that was given to us from on high and it never was because we always individuals played a role in creating their own identity. But anyway, that idea just doesn't work anymore because identity can't be a given from some sort of fixed mass media thing because mass media is very 20th century. And now we're in a world with so many different inputs, many of them created by us and people like us around the world doing different funny things on TikTok or YouTube or whatever. Today's digital tools aren't perfect, but they give us the chance to express and connect and create in ways that we really didn't have before and which can help people to form creative identities. There are still sexist representations and racist representations and other kinds of representation that put people in boxes or which stereotype particular groups. But also we live in a world where it's more easy to highlight the things that we don't agree with, share them with others, expose people who are doing that kind of stuff. And some people are going to still love that kind of stuff and some people are going to hate that kind of stuff. And we can, we have big fights in social media these days about those things. And the quality of that conversation, whilst not always the most elevated form of conversation, the fact that that's all going on is powerful and interesting and sometimes it doesn't seem to be going the way that we want it to go, but it is part of a big conversation that makes a difference to how we think about ourselves and how we are in the world. That's what identity is. So that's a few thoughts. I hope that's helpful. It is a bit of a mush of different, complicated, sometimes conflicting things almost. But, but that's what it's like. That's what being in the world is like now. Identity is this thing that you construct for yourself, but at the same time, there's all of this stuff coming at you. There's all the stuff that you can create and make and share as well. So identity has opportunities to be very creative and connecting-y. It also has the side of it which sort of wants to put you into particular boxes and particular places, and it's your own job to resist that. That's why it's exciting and interesting, though. I hope this helped. Thanks.